What's up guys, this is Mr. Asian Pie. I don't really like to make sequels unless it's a remake of an older video, but considering the amount of you guys who have asked for another video on this dude, I've decided to make an exception. Also, as a synopsis for this video so you have a frame of reference for my earlier statements of the viewing, Freda claims that medieval Europe invented racism. You can't make this shit up. This sounds like something that Nick Fuentes would say to justify the fact he has a harem of ethnic women. Alright, bear with me here. In World of Warcraft, when you create your character, you make two major decisions that will affect how you interact with the game. The first is your class, the second your race. In video games, race is usually an amalgamation of culture, a person's aesthetic traits, and certain advantages assumed to be either biological or magical. Video games, like all media, are a reflection of our cultural tropes. Oh, thank god. I thought we were gonna go somewhere else for a second. <laughs> We'll talk briefly about what race is and isn't according to the science, but the main topic of this video is going to be the history of it. When did we humans start viewing things in the context of race? Oh, that's an easy answer. Since the beginning of the human diaspora. Are you going to pretend like that the Abrahamic Jews weren't discriminated against by the Egyptians, who had a race-based slavery system? Like, I don't know, I personally believe that us Chinese calling ourselves the Middle Kingdom and everyone else the barbarians has something to do with us believing that we were ethnically superior in some way, shape, or form. This video bases itself on the work of Joseph L. Graves, the first African American to receive a PhD in evolutionary biology, as well as Alan H. Goodman, a biological anthropologist and former president of the American Anthropology Association who co-directs the APA's education project on race. So, uh, I looked into this guy. I found his Twitter. Something tells me that science is not his main motivation. I also looked into this Mr. Alan H. Goodman. Once again. Finally, the historian Geraldine Hank looked up this chick, couldn't find any info on her, but she goes to the University of Austin, if not already made apparent. According to the Human Genome Project, humans today have on average 99.9% .9 identical DNA, making it impossible to further subdivide the species of Homo sapiens. Genetic isolation, sharp boundaries, and distinct evolutionary lineages of human quote-unquote races also does not exist. According to modern science, there seemingly is no genetic basis for race. This is extremely misleading. 99.9% .9 variation is for the individual, not the group whether it be race, family, or other genetic-based hierarchical systems. The difference between different racial groups, specifically the Caucasians, East Asians, and Sub-Saharan Africans, is closer to around 10%. This is a large enough difference to predict which diseases will affect you throughout your life. For a source, the same exact 2004 study. Confronted with these signs, I've seen some proponents of quote-unquote scientific race terminology usage on humans redefine the definition along things such as Y DNA, inherited down the patrilineal line, or mitochondrial DNA. I know this is him trying to dunk on Rudyard of What a Faultist because he wants attention his father never gave him? But are we just ignoring Massa Man? Or his incredibly well-researched and detailed maps? There has been an attempt to reinvent race. Huh. Race is a worldview and social classification that divides humans into groups based on their appearance and assumed ancestry. Socially defined races are unstable categories in that definitions, names, and color lines change. Socially defined race? You mean ethnicity? Let's try not to derail meanings here. And yes, it is natural for ethnicities and even racial groups to grow and shrink, much like a genus. For health reasons, your doctor might ask about your racial heritage, because social categorization of race may correspond to a community that could have a higher risk of certain heritable diseases. Oh, so you're downplaying it. I thought you were going to be cheeky and not admit it at all. I'll give credit that you admit to the elephant in the room. Black Americans may be more at risk of certain respiratory diseases in America because black Americans are more likely to have lower incomes or live in economically disadvantaged areas. Buildings built after 1989 are often more expensive than the ones built before them, and asbestos was only banned for use in insulation in 1989. You see, what he's doing here is manipulating a major counter to the narrative, saying that because of racism, certain racial groups are more prone to certain diseases, which is really smart, but it fails to explain why Europeans are more prone to blood clotting while also being more resilient to HIV as compared to their Asian counterparts, or why Africans and Europeans are more likely to suffer from Alzheimer's as compared to Asians. This video concerns itself with the concept of race that is widespread today, not other systems that may or may not constitute early systems of racism such as the caste system in India or any other conceptions of race. So, we're going to talk about how the Europeans invented racism by ignoring everyone else also having discriminatory practices. If race as a term to define and describe biological differences is capable of being reinvented, then that logically means there must have been a point when race was invented for the very first time. Wait. I've heard of this before. Oh. Also, you're the one reinventing the term race. In any other context, in any other time, race has always been referred to as the biological differences between different groups of people caused by the human diaspora. The modern leftist ideology is the definition of evil. They can only destroy the fundamental principles upon which humans built society and understanding upon. What is left when you remove this basis of reality? Nothing. Because nothing is the only thing left with meaning. Why do you think we have such a mental health crisis today? But I digress. This is supposed to be about race and why apparently doesn't exist. The idea of professional murder priests wasn't without its critics in the Christian world. After all, it sort of goes against a lot of the teachings of the Bible. He formulates an interesting theory justifying their existence. According to Bernard, the enemy wasn't just unspeakably vile, abominable, and accursed, as Pope Urban II had said. Muslims, according to Bernard, were quote unquote malefactors. To proclaim that anyone who killed a malefactor was not a killer of a human, but a killer of only evil. Bernard, in fact, explicitly called for genocide by quote unquote removing from the earth the enemies of the Christian name.
It's almost as if Christian Europe was under siege for 300 years by the Muslims. For those of you who paid attention in freshman history class, you would know that the Uyamads conquered much of the Iberian Peninsula, and during this time the Catholic Church would slowly lose their grip over several Christian territories, such as North Africa, Antolia, and even the Balkans. From the Christian perspective, this was a life or death scenario, and it wasn't really much of a stretch to believe that if nothing was done during this time, that the ideas of Jesus Christ would likely be extinguished by the words of Muhammad. The Crusader, consisted of 21 different linguistic, regional, and ethno-national groups, began to see themselves as one. Holy War created by necessity or opportunity a superstructure to function as glue between them, granting them a common goodness against the evil of the inhuman so-called Saracen. This Christian unity of the sort was not something that existed prior to the Crusades. Oh, brother. That's literally what a Holy War is. The lines in a Holy War are drawn between one and another's theology, not one and another's race and ethnicity. A major counter to Freda's narrative would have been the existing Christian kingdoms in Anatolia, specifically New Armenia. The Kingdom of New Armenia allied itself with the European Crusaders to take back the Holy Land, and due to their location near the Mediterranean, they also had a much darker skin pigmentation than their European comrades. The Crusades weren't the race war that Freda wants you to imagine them as. In this Middle English King of Tars, a white Christian princess is forced to marry a quote-unquote loathly black Muslim sultan and fake conversion to Islam. Eventually, the Muslim sultan is convinced to convert to the Christian faith, and as he does so, his skin goes from black to white, quote, without taint. While Freda tries to paint this story in a racist context, you also have to remember that white in the Christian faith also means pure. Under the intended context, the racist undertones of the story have a more religious meaning than what Freda is making it out to be. Owing to it predating modern conceptions of genetics, it also has unfamiliar connotations, with religion being tied inherently to the color of your skin. This is race, but it's far closer tied to religion at this point in history. The previously mentioned Armenians, the Ethiopians, the... Trebizon. And Nubidians. I guess they didn't exist. A century after the First Crusade in 1218 in England, Jews were forced by law to wear badges on their chest to set them apart from the rest of the English population. Jewish bodies, according to them, had a special stench, and some authors held that Jewish bodies came with horns and a tail. For centuries, a belief in Western Europe circulated in which Jews had to imbibe the blood of Christians in order to survive. Jewish converts to Christianity were identified and discriminated against on the belief that they held an impurity in their blood, making it impossible for them to ever truly be Christian. As terrible as these actions are, what is the difference between these discriminatory practices, which were ways the English government would use to extract money from the merchant class, and something like, hmm, the Hu Chang persecution? in which the Tang Dynasty repossessed a bunch of Buddhist monasteries so they can fund a war to massacre a bunch of Uyghurs, which all happened 200 years before the Crusades and 400 years before the English persecution of the Jews. If we're going by Freda's logic that race is a boogeyman concept of us versus them, like how he outlines the European view of the Crusades, the Chinese dynasties practically invented racism 2,000 years before the Crusades even occurred, because according to Chinese rhetoric, we're the Middle Kingdom, surrounded by barbarians. When Columbus arrived in the Americas, he, as many Europeans after him would do, regarded the natives who greeted him in a friendly manner as innocent children of nature, and those who greeted this foreign trespasser aggressively as savage cannibals who must be enslaved or exterminated. To be fair, the natives also hated the aggressive tribes. The reason why the mighty Aztec civilization fell to 600 Spanish guys was because everyone fucking hated them. And that was a bit of an understatement. Something about involuntary human sacrifice is just really frowned upon. Also, just to add on, guess who fought against the native enslavement? European Christian monks. One manuscript from hundreds of years prior by Bartholomeus Anglicus about how the climate affected people's skin color. When Europeans arrived in Brazil, which held a similar latitude to that of West Africa, they realized that Brazilian Amerindians did not possess the same skin pigmentations as they would expect in accordance with this climate model of skin color. What Freddy uses as evidence disproves European race theories at the time, not the concept of race itself as what Freda is arguing. Actually, as a double whammy, the discovery of the Americas proves that race as a biological feature is very much real. Why don't the Native Americans look like Africans? Because they're distantly related to Asians. Why do Aboriginals look like this while living in an environment like this? Because they're descendants of pre-Bantu Southern Africans. You just proved the narrative you were arguing is false. What happened to the left which trusted the science? The idea that they could have been cursed by God himself to be a race of slaves made the idea much more palatable. Spain and Portugal then became the first principal exporters of a new conception of race. A new idea of an inherent tendency towards heresy passed down through blood. Let's put ourselves into a frame of reference. These explorers obliterated an entire civilization with like 600 dudes and some natives. Logic would say that the entire civilization should win, but somehow you and your comrades scored a decisive victory. How would you explain that? Biological race in the sense does not exist. <gasps> Social race does exist, where people belonging to one of these socially constructed races are generally of a similar socioeconomic class and often suffer similar health issues as a result of their social position. Oh no. Now he made race a classification which is a part of a racial caste system. See what happens when leftists take control of vocabulary? First, the concept of race is a genetic one. Then, race is interwoven with theological classifications. Even though it really wasn't the case during the Crusades. And now, it's a social classification. 
See what I mean when I say that nothing has meaning anymore? To Freda, race is a buzzword. To him and his audience, race can be whatever he wants. This is how authoritarians rewrite history and tell people that it's the real McCoy. This is how warped narrative becomes truth. And here's my closing thoughts to you. There is such a thing as a truth in the universe, and there is a meaning to life, but you wouldn't be able to find it with bad actors, such as Freda, stripping away the draconian rules which give words definition. Take back control of your vocabulary, because if Freda and people like him get their way, the only thing that will have meaning left is nothing. This has been Mr. Asian Pie. See you on the flip, and don't be stupid.